Languages are wonders. Did you know that are, there are over 6,000 languages spoken in the world today? There are over 40,000 dialects, each with their own characteristics, sound, structure, and vocabulary depth. We use language to communicate. Communicate feelings, communicate ideas and knowledge. Languages can also be a barrier. Barrier between us because if you go to an, a different country, there are many foreigners here, if you go to a different country where you don't speak the language, you may feel like you are deaf, mute, totally disabled. This is a serious disability if you are fleeing from a situation. Think about the Syrian doctor that is fleeing from Syria and going to Germany. Her knowledge, her doctor degree is nullified when she migrates to Germany. And what does that mean to her and her family? Can she offer to learn a new language? That takes many, many years to, to, to come over. This language barrier can create a gap between people, culture, and create misunderstanding that leads to conflicts and even war. Some of us learn a new language out of a hobby. Italian, for example, is a very popular language. Some people dream of going to Italy and being able to order pasta with truffles in Italian. Some of us learn out of necessity, and some of us learn because it will bring more opportunities to their business. I'm an engineer. I came to Japan 14 years ago to do my PhD in artificial intelligence, AI. Icelandic is my first language. Danish is my second. English is my third. German is my fourth. And so I had done my share of language learning before I came to Japan and took on Japanese. It turned out to be quite a challenge, I must say. The classes taught here at the university, uh, where I was learning Japanese as well, they did not work really well. The private classes that I took, they were a little bit better, but they were expensive. Now, self-studying is hard. This drove me absolutely crazy. And I started digging into this problem of language learning. As I was in great position to do so, through my scientific research here at this fine university where I stand today. I was mainly concerned with two questions. First, how are languages taught today? I looked into all kinds of different methods, bought all the possible books that I could find in the bookstore, 
I tried out podcasts, Rose the Stone, the Pinster Method, self-studying, of course, immersed learning, and so forth. The second question that I was interested in, how does the human mind work when we are learning languages? So I read all the possible research that I could find on this topic as well and tried actually quite a lot of it on myself and some of my peers. What I found out is that there's a huge gap between how languages are taught today and how the brain functions. So once I completed my PhD in artificial intelligence and speech recognition in 2009, I could not stop thinking about this gap. For a scientist, there's nothing more exciting than an unresolved problem of grand proportions. This is why instead of getting a real job, like my father would call it, and have a job at Google or Goldman Sachs, I decided to focus all my time on this unresolved problem of language learning. I made it my own and full-time job. I had no money and I had no office. So for the next eight months, I spent in a park called Yoyogi, beautiful park that is here in Tokyo. There I was alone in nature and really, really far out of my comfort zone. And my father was kind enough to pay my bills and I accepted that because I knew I was on something very, very big. Something that could possibly revolutionize language learning for good for everyone else. So this gap, what is this gap between the brain and how languages are taught today? The way languages are taught today is by giving out exercises that are made to build one on top of the other. The problem is that the teacher cannot know if the student is ready for the next exercise because the teacher does not know how much is remembered of the one preceding it and its necessary base. So it easily becomes confusing for the student and is inefficient. The reason being that the forgetting curve is not taken into account. In order to teach languages successfully, we need to know not only how the brain learns, but also take into account how it forgets. The forgetting curve was discovered in 1885, over 100 years ago, and is the key to this. And how does the forgetting curve work? It is perhaps best understood by giving an example. I met a person here in the networking session 10 minutes ago, and I already forgot his name. I may have remembered this person's name for 30 seconds, and then it was gone, completely gone out of my memory. However, if I would recall that name within those 30 seconds, something magical happens. What happens is that the memory for the name transfers from being 30 seconds into two minutes. And if I do that again, so I would try to recall that name, 
within those two minutes, especially at the end, then I would remember it for ten minutes. If I repeat that, it becomes two hours. Two hours become fifteen minutes, fifteen hours, and fifteen hours become a day. A day becomes three days, three days becomes a week, week becomes a month, and so forth. This is called spaced repetition, and it uses the forgetting curve. So, the problem is that when learning a language in the traditional way, it is very hard for the teacher or the student to manage what to learn, how, and when. But if we apply artificial intelligence to schedule the learning process, we change the game. Because it can remind us not just to learn words, since learning words is just the beginning of language acquisition, but instead managing all the other elements and optimize it for each and every step. Systematically activating listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. all through certain exercises that are all connected together. Then we can indeed bridge this gap. After eight months in the park, the solution came to me. A magical moment where I connected all the dots, all the puzzles came into one, completed, like a thunder that struck through my head. The moment when I finally solved the riddle. I knew the next step was to create a mobile app so that a person could have artificial intelligence in her pocket, all the time, aiding with the learning. It would be wiring and activating skills in the brain one by one on a word level and making sure that skill is kept fresh in memory and move on to more complex skills at the very moment when the easier skill had been mastered all through an app. This I could not do on my own. So I founded a company. I got investors to join us. I created a team of great specialists to create this new learning concept. We spent the next five years on developing the app solution, using what had become clear to me through deep understanding of how the human works and how it associates memory to listening, reading, writing, and speaking. After creating the map or the model that connects the learning process, all that was needed was to pick the right material and put that through the learning model. Material that is not general, but tailor-made for each user and his and her needs in order to make the best use of the student's time. As a test to prove the concept, we spent quite a while tailoring our learning method, this advanced delivery system, to a well-known language proficiency test called TOEIC that millions of people take every year throughout the world. There's a large study that was done here in Japan 
that shows that it takes about 225 hours to improve 100 points on TOEIC for people who are around 500 TOEIC level. The study included over 1,000 company employees, and the teacher was a native English teacher. We did a similar test and got employees from big Japanese companies to go through our online program. And it turned out that our method was five times more efficient than the baseline. Five times more efficient than a native English teacher. Five times. We have done it, found a way to revolutionize language learning. Imagine, instead of going to a one-hour class, all you need to do is to spend 12 minutes in the app. Or, if you choose to spend one hour in the app, you will learn five times more. Your mind starts racing when a result this big can be created by a team of 12 people. What can be done to revolutionize education in the future by applying AI to change the delivery system and make it fit better with our brain? Not just for languages, but for everything. Today we are up and running. There are Japanese, large Japanese companies that are using our system to teach their managers and directors to become fluent in English. And we are preparing to bring in hundreds of thousands of people from these companies through our program. So we have a lot of work ahead of us because I won't rest until we have taught millions, perhaps billions of people, to communicate better. Teach the Syrian, the Syrian doctor, German. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one, said John Lennon when he asked us to imagine no barriers between countries and people. I think it's a great dream. One that I'm ready to put my life and knowledge to realize. Thank you.